new swing shoe that peels golf club. And what we'll talk about is stop slice. So three tips to stop slicing the golf ball. So stop so a slice for the driver uh, can hinder any any consistency within your golf swing, especially when you're playing golf in the wind and when you're playing long golf co golf courses where you're struggling to get the ball off the tee and in the fairway. So. A slice is about a shot that starts left to right in the air and curves further right to the air. The call face is open to the path and the swing path is out to in. The ball has to start left of target but then it, further, it curves further left to right in the air. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is control the call face. So a slice, as I just said, is when the call face is open. So we need to find out a way in order to close the club face. So an open club face is when I get to the top of the backswing and the toe is almost toed down. So if, or toed up, sorry, it's, it's toed up slightly. And as that happens, I have slightly a weak grip. So the weak grip, what I mean by that is a weak grip. So too much in the pan with the knuckles. You can't really see any knuckles on the left hand. And from here, the right hand goes on top and you don't create any consistency. So, if I was to keep my left hand on the club there, and I can be able to, I can move the club face more to the right. That's the club face open, and I can more to the left. So my reduction, I've got a reduction in wrist action. I can't really fully release the club, so that's why a lot of golfers slice golf ball because the club head can travel more to the right than it can the left. That's with a weak grip. So what we need to try and do is try and make this wrist so. Make this wrist so instead of showing two, uh, no knuckles on the left hand, get that hand more round so we can see two or three knuckles and the, the right hand just goes on top. So make sure that the two thumbs are pointing down the right hand side of the grip. So that will increase the rotation of the club face and allow us to close the club face to the impact. Another thing that we need to work on is, so a lot of golfers get top of the backswing, their left wrist is cupped. So what that does is it the uh, cup position. So it's almost that the wrist is pointing down to the ground. So what we need to do is try and when we get to the top of the back swing, feel like the logo, so the foot joint logo on my glove points to the sky, and from here, as I start down, it goes out the way, so the club's thrown out the way, but slightly from the inside, so it's that way, glove still points, slightly in a stronger position, that will allow your wrist to increase the distance that they travel and the flexion through impact. So, a good, a good position, Get into a strong position, board, a bold left wrist, thumbs down the right hand side of the grip, allow the club face to close instead of this weak cup position. Another thing, this is tip two, is rotation in hips and legs. So there's a lack of rotation in hips and legs. So lack of rotation, the knees don't change flex, so that obviously you don't use any lower body rotation at all, it's kind of impaired. So we, we don't see any hip depth or we don't see any lifting up at all. So we need to try and get into the habit of understanding how our legs flex and how our legs get that little bit of depth. So if I turn my hips, my left knee increases flex, but my right knee decreases flex. This, is al this allows my hips to turn efficiently and allows my shoulders to, to return as well and rotate. So if I don't, what tends to, a lot of slice, a lot of golfers are sliced, don't allow their legs to fully, fully change flex. So what tends to happen is they lift the club up, the legs, they've not got any rotation in the lower body, they can't keep, create any momentum from the ground up. And what this does is it reduces the rotation of the pelvis and you're going to come over the top because the arms are working more, more independently than the legs. So we need to try and get into a, a sensation. Focus on rotating the lead leg more. So you see a lot of golfers who get into this position in their weight, but we need to try and maintain posture. If we maintain posture our pelvis, this will increase the range of motion in our pelvis. So focus on this left leg, so lead leg. If I take the club back, focus on this leg flexing in the way. Right knee or right knee should have a little bit of flex, but not as much as the lead leg. So the trail leg should flex slightly, but the left knee should increase flex. This so if you increase flex in your left leg, but keep your posture, this will allow you to increase the, the hip depth. So I'll be able to return my rotate my hips. I can feel that down the outside of my left leg, and I allow the arms to create more momentum. So as I come back down, 
then I'll be able to lift off from that. So the more I flex my leg, the more I'll be able to turn my hips out of the way quickly and create that more movement and allow it over the top. Another thing that we want to focus on is we turn too much, so there's too much a lateral mo motion. So what I mean by a lateral motion is we move away from the golf ball and we move our upper body too much. So the weight should be distributed in the, in the middle of our feet. What tends to happen is people get too much of a lateral sway so their head moves. So if my head's positioned over the golf ball, what they'll do is they'll move their weight too much on the outside of the right foot. What that does, it gets too much weight behind the golf ball. What this does is it pushes the path out to the left and the clock race is generally going to go up because you're not actually fully rotating through impact. So get into this position, so if I sway, then if you see there, shoulders open up, my shoulders, so if I take a back sway, my shoulders open up, my cuff face is open because I can't fully rotate. What this does, it pushes the path at the left, cuff face open to the path. So we need to try and get into habit as we stand down the way, that we have a, a, a rotator motion, rotating motion of my left hip. So my left hip turns first, so it's like a chain reaction. So the left hip turns first, I should turn my hip, I should turn my left hip out of the way before I get to the top of the back swing. This reduces the, 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 the length of the swing, so it turn my hips. What this will do is it'll get my weight positioned over the golf ball, it'll get my weight on top of the ball, or slightly in front of it, it gets my weight on my left foot instead of being too far behind. So, try and get into a habit of doing that. So, what we talked about there was cl club face control, club face open. We need to strengthen this left hand grip, get in a more bold position, where the, the logo points up to the sky and outward, trying to eliminate that cupped position where the club face is open. Another thing we need to talk about, or we did talk about, was rotation in hips and legs. So we need to change flex in the left leg, so increase flex left leg, reduce flex in the uh, trail leg. So this will allow you to rotate better, allow the hips to turn more efficiently, and the pelvis will be able to rotate more consistently. So another thing we talked about was how we turn too much off the golf ball. So too much lateral, lateral swaying and, what we, and too much sliding on the downswing. So as we get to the top, we need to turn our left hip coming down the way. Turn our left hip before we, our hands reach parallel to the top. So that will allow our hands to drop right into the position and reduce the arms, the distance to the arms from. So if you've got any thoughts on that, that should point you in the right direction for eliminating eliminating the right hand side of the golf course. If you've got any thoughts on the video, let me know and subscribe.